In this movie I want to talk about where you can change the various settings and preferences in Vectorworks. And let's begin with uh, the Vectorworks preferences and these preferences affect uh, all Vectorworks files that you open and they, they will persist between, uh, between Vectorworks sessions. So if you quit Vectorworks and open it again they're going to come back uh, exactly the same as you have set them up. Uh, Vectorworks preferences can be reached from the Vectorworks menu on the Macintosh using uh, choosing preferences here or on both Macintosh and Windows you can choose it from the preferences menu here. Now that's the long way to get to it. The shortcut way to get to it is to put the cursor up here in the toolbar and right click and you'll see that you can directly access Vectorworks preferences from there. So let's open this dialog and, and have a look. Now I think you'll find that rulers are turned on by default and really uh, unless you have a specific need for needing rulers for CAD drawing rulers are not useful at all so I would recommend you turn those off. Most of these are, are self-explanatory. Some of these preferences for example zoom line thickness and show other objects while in editing modes are now able to be put up here in the uh, in the toolbar using this little drop down menu here so you don't have to come in here to change those uh, for generally we recommend that this be turned on quartz imaging on the Macintosh or GDI plus imaging uh, if you're on Windows and also anti-aliasing having both of those on will give you a much better on-screen performance, make uh, opacity work uh, and so on. Uh, we've got some choices here for example to whether light objects are displayed in always wireframe or never and same with 3D loci. In the edit tab, just going back one, uh, generally the default settings here are not too bad. The 2D conversion resolution, generally set that on medium or high. And you can use the, the help at the bottom here to get a bit more detailed information about what each setting does. Under session here, again you can probably just keep uh, most of these settings as they uh, are set up uh, in the default preferences. This option here is something that I get asked about quite a lot, Reset Saved Settings. Sometimes you'll get a dialog that will come up and it will say, do you always want to do this action? And you go, yes. And then you realize a day or two later that you actually didn't wish to choose that setting um, because you actually want to have the choice to, uh, to, to do whatever it was that you thought you'd never need to choose again and this reset save settings button here if you click that it will allow you to reset the always do selected action choices in dialogues and also the choices that you've made for uh, the various tool modes up here as well so that's that's how you can reset those under 3D generally you can uh, keep these as they are by default usually set this on medium or high. Autosave. Now generally in autosave uh, you should have be autosaving and there are two ways that this can work. You can either have it automatically saving the file that you're currently working on and that means that you don't have to save the file. Uh, the recommended option is to autosave auto to a backup copy of the file. Uh, and when you have this option selected, it means that you are responsible for saving the active file, but Vectorworks is going to automatically save a backup of the active file. So if, uh, if the computer crashes or if Vectorworks crashes or something like that, you'll have a backup uh, as well as the original to, to go back to and here you can choose the location where the backup file is stored and generally speaking uh, I would choose a custom location 
and the reason I say this is that all your backup files will get put in the one place and after a project is finished or whatever you can easily go into the one location and delete backup files that are say older than two months or, or something like that. You can choose that location by clicking here. And you also have the option of saving the uh, the number of most recent backups. So if you have this number here set to say 15 minutes and you say have this set to 4 then you're going to have backups that will take you back an hour. So you'll have 4 times 15 minutes will give you an hour of backups. Obviously this is going to fill up your hard drive more quickly but if you're on a mission critical project and uh, or you're making changes that you're not sure you want to keep then you can use this to uh, to save those backups ultimately you can delete the ones that you that you don't need when the project has has uh, gone past the, the critical stage or, or has been uh, completed the interactive preferences these sliders here allow you to control the size of the selection box for the general cursor and also the snap box and whether in fact they show or not uh, you can also turn on or off selection highlighting selection highlighting means that when you put the cursor over an object it will highlight indicating that this is a selectable object or when you do a marquee select that it will select items um, it will show you the items that it's going to select as you drag across uh, or over the, the objects. Cursor pre-selection highlighting this means that if you hover over an object the delay here will be the delay until the object highlights showing that it is selectable. I like to have that set to about two seconds and there's a few other options here and you can read about those in uh, what they do in the help down here you can also access the interactive appearance settings from this tab in Vectorworks Preferences and this is what allows you to control the colors of pretty well everything that you see in Vectorworks from uh, the layer plane to the page boundary uh, to object highlighting uh, to smart cursor cues and, and so on and when you click on some of these you'll find that not only can you set the color but you can set the opacity and the size of them. And then under user folders, uh, this is where you can choose where you store custom libraries like workspaces and uh, library files that you like to use, uh, standards, templates, these sorts of things. Okay, so that's Vectorworks preferences. Uh, just one other thing before I close this dialog, you'll notice this reset button here. Uh, sometimes if Vectorworks is misbehaving, uh, doing strange things, it can be because the preferences file became corrupted and one of the first things that you can do to, to, to try and correct that is to click this reset button. Doing this will reset all of the preferences back to the default settings but it can often correct some uh, errant behavior if, if just just some strange thing that suddenly started happening in Vectorworks. The next thing I want to talk about uh, is document preferences and on both Macintosh and Windows you can access document preferences from the file menu under document settings and then document preferences. You can also access it much more easily by right clicking up here and choosing document preferences. Now in document preferences the settings here only pertain to the current document so every setting in here is only going to affect the currently active document. So here you'll find things like black and white only um, and uh, this one here adjust flip text used to be an application preference or a Vectorworks preference now it's a document preference uh, here we also have dimensions here you can choose to associate dimensions and auto associate them so if you want to turn that off you can do that here 
Uh, you're also able to create custom dimension standards here by clicking the custom button, new, name your standard, click OK, then edit the standard and you change all of the settings here that you require and then that standard will become available in this list and you can set it by default or choose it when you're about to place a dimension. You also have things like the dimension slash thickness here and under resolution you've got text display and bitmap display and this is where you set the resolution for printing bitmap images. Uh, so generally you'd want to increase this to something like 150 or maybe even 300 at the most and also for doing uh, quartz PDF export. Generally if you've got Vectorworks Architect, Landmark, Spotlight or Designer you'll be using the export PDF and this won't be relevant. So that's uh, the Vectorworks document preferences. One other setting that also appears in this menu here are the units and these, this also pertains to uh, each document that you open and in the units dialog you're able to, to choose the units and generally you'll be working in millimeters or meters and here you're also able to set what uh, units will be used for area and volume. Now I mentioned about uh, about these few items here. I can show this one first, uh, black and white only. Clicking on that you'll see that that text, the red overview text becomes black. We just jump down to the next layer here I'll demonstrate it on this layer. You'll see that the color disappears from the drawing when I do that. This one here is zoom line thickness and when you have that turned on and you have some lines that have different line weights you'll see that as you zoom in those line weights will get thicker as though you're using a magnifying glass. If you turn that off then the line weights will just stay at whatever their designated line weight is. The minimum line weight that uh, most monitors can display is about 5.5 uh, of a millimeter so if you have this turned off then you're not going to see any line weight unless it's greater than a 0.5. You'll see this one is 0.7 if I set it to 1 it'll get thicker. If I set it to 0 0.5, 0 0.5 is equal to one pixel, so you won't actually see that. So that's what you can use to turn this on and off. Now the uh, this one here, show other objects while in uh, in edit modes. Here I have a group, and if I double click to edit the group, you'll see that I can see the other objects in the drawing while I'm editing the group, and that can be quite useful if I'm wanting to align this to some other object in the drawing that's within the group or within the symbol and this will control whether I can see those other objects or not so very easily I can turn them on and off and once again these what appears in here is controlled by this little drop down menu here and you'll see there's a tick beside black and white only show other objects zoom line thickness and show and so on and these can also be accessed by just right clicking in this area up here. Now the next thing I wanted to talk about were are the settings that control the snapping and these settings you can access from this menu here, the smart cursor settings under the tools menu on both Macintosh and Windows. and you'll find that generally these uh, the list here will coincide with the various options in, in here so you've got some general settings once again you can 
edit the interactive appearance settings from this location as well. We also notice that in Vectorworks preferences. Under grid, you're able to set here uh, how big the reference grid is and how big the snap grid is and whether the grid is visible or not and whether you're showing 3D axis uh, labels and, and things like that. We generally recommend that this snap to grid option down here is turned off. There's very little need for that to be turned on and it just adds um, work for Vectorworks to detect the grid, particularly if it's a very small grid like 3 millimeters. All the time you're moving the cursor, Vectorworks is trying to snap onto that grid. And it can also lead to inaccuracies in your drafting. So leaving that turned off is, uh, is the suggested uh, workflow. If we look at object, these are fairly self-explanatory. Now this one here is normally off by default. And I'll just tell you what this one does. If I pick up this object and I want it to just snap on the edge of this object here, you'll see that it's not happening at the moment. If we go back in there and turn that setting on, there's one of those don't show this dialog again options. If I turn nearest point on edge on, now you'll see when I pick up this object that I can snap onto the edge of other objects. So let's continue with our tour of this one. So generally you'll want to have that turned on. Angle snaps. Up here you can add additional angles. So if you had a, a strange angle you wanted to snap to, like 12.5 degrees or 15 or whatever, you can just put a comma and add that angle in there. Smart point. Again, you can read what these uh, various options do in the help text down the bottom here. And we've got smart edge and distance. And these, all of these here, these six, coincide with the, the, the six options along here. Now there's three more sets of preferences that I want to mention. Firstly, under document settings, you'll see here that you can access dash styles. This is a document preference. And here you are able to look at the dash styles in the current document. And uh, since Vectorworks 2011, they're all uh, ISO labeled to coincide with the ISO standards. To edit one of these you can select it and click edit or you can just double click and get into the hatch, uh, sorry, the uh, dash style editor or you can create a new style by clicking the new button here. You're also able to rename these up here if you want to. So it's quite easy to uh, to manage this list. You'll also notice that if you put the cursor over this first column here that you can pick and drag or click and drag so you can change the order of these items in the list so if you'd prefer to have some of your custom dash styles right up here at the top then you can create them and then just drag them up the top here in this list. Now this is a document setting so it's only going to pertain to, doc to dash styles in this document. Now the other two are the marker list and line thicknesses. Let's look at marker list first. So here is the marker list dialog and once again you can change the order of these by clicking and dragging. You can edit a marker style by clicking the edit button and there's lots of options in here for editing and you can also create a new marker style and once you do that then the marker style, the new marker style you've created is going to appear in the attributes palette here or anywhere else where you, in Vectorworks where you can choose a marker style from. And the last thing I want to look at under options here was line thickness. 
So here we have uh, 10 default line thicknesses and you can set those up as you want. The maximum is 6.48 millimeters and you can also view these in mils and points but generally you'll want to look at them in millimeters. So hopefully that gives you an idea of uh, where to find the various settings in Vectorworks.